Anigaishimasu. Welcome to Cliff's Wujo. A Wujo is a place where the Wujo arts are practiced, as a dojo is a place in which the martial arts are practiced. The Wu arts are all things not allowed in mainstream media. Wu is all talk not fit for polite discussion. Wu is the other half of what makes us human. Today is Saturday, March 24th at 7.12 a.m. subject of today's Wujo is going to be very disturbing for a great number of people. Uh, the subject is uh, at the core of the conspiracies that we see around us. They're all interrelated. You can't have one without the other because they're, they're uh, not individually self-sustaining or self-supporting, and they rely on each other. That is to say, the inner nested nature of conspiracy itself in order that the grand conspiracy of it all move forward. So again, this is a little bit of disclaimer here and a bit of fair warning. What follows is um, adult discussion of a subject that will be potentially offensive at a number of different levels. And what I'm referring to is what I'm going to call the grand penis conspiracy. And I'm not referring to anything that Sigmund Freud and uh, those of his ilk may have come up with. And this grand conspiracy relating to the penis is something that really uh, males are going to be less uh, offended about it, I think, than females. And women have a very solid claim to offense from this particular thing. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if they go on out and start burning down religious organizations right and left, uh, especially in the Western world and uh, particularly um, in the Jewish world. And here's the crux of the matter. We have before us a strange planet in which males of our uh, of the dominant species, humans trucking around, deliberately nip the foreskin of newborn uh, male children, uh, the penis foreskin. They do this as this weird uh, sign or covenant with God thing that supposedly comes from the Jewish tradition. Or they do it for, in the Western uh, Americanized world, where they're supposedly Christian or, you know, theist at some level, but not particularly Jewish, uh, the, <coughs> the rationale for a number of years, uh, promulgated by Jewish doctors, I have to acknowledge, uh, was that um, the foreskin left on the male ended up causing uh, uterine cancer in, the, in their mates later on in life which, like, hmm, does not compute. But in any event, uh, that, that was the rationale for nipping off the foreskin. But the if you really get into the details of some of these conspiracies and you start really thinking about things, you wonder, well, you know, why? Why do certain things exist? Why do these anomalies occur that are uh, otherwise inexpl inexplicable in and of themselves and don't really make a whole lot of sense? Uh, if the idea had been to shed something, you could have had sacrifices of any number of other parts of the body rather than the foreskin. Why was the foreskin chosen? Anybody ever question that? You know, why not nip off the end of a finger or, or lop off a toe? Or uh, and as in some cultures, they uh, braid. It's called abrading the chest, where they literally cut uh, knife marks into the chest in their covenant with God, uh, which is basically the shedding of the blood and the sanctifying of the the red blood and the ground and all of that kind of stuff. So why why was it that the foreskin was chosen? What what and if you really want to look at it, you need to examine what was lost in the in the removal of all of these millions of foreskins over time. And what was lost has to also be examined both individually, what was lost to those individual males, what was lost to the community that they participated in, uh, a.k.a. their family with their mates, and then what has been lost to... Uh, the gender of the female in the Western world in a larger sense because it is effective of all of those levels. It's my opinion, and this is where we start getting into some of the more offensive material, that the uh, choice of the foreskin was deliberate. It was craftily chosen. It was chosen with a great understanding of human physiology and the way that physiology relates to the community as a whole and the way that that physiology can affect the mind of the individual. And this uh, betrays, a, I mean, a staggering level of uh, understanding of our physiology. And basically, here's what's going on. At some point, whether it was Jewish or pre-Jewish, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really care. I'm not uh, anti-Jewish, nor am I anti-Semitic. The two are not the same. 
but here is the situation. Um, the male foreskin serves a purpose. It's not just useless skin. In fact, it is very highly sophisticated uh, adaptive skin that serves multiple purposes. And so let's examine some of the um, uh, functions of uh, what goes on with the, the foreskin. There are a lot of, um, uh, I mean, you get into the level where they say that uh, the sex act without it is is radically different. And I'm not speaking to the mechanics of that or to the satisfaction levels of the orgasm or any of that kind of thing. What I'm talking about is that the foreskin of the male is a different type of the different type of skin. And no, it's not just merely because it expands, although that is a component of it and actually goes to uh, create the conditions that allow this skin to be very uh, special. And what makes it special is because it can expand so um, much, it is of a different nature of skin, and it has an entirely different set of uh, receptors within it than other parts of the skin on the other uh, than on the human body. And it also unlike other kinds of skin, uh, serves a different function. Most of the skin on, most of the epidermis on the outside of your body is intended to absorb radiation and slough off. It's intended to be a sacrificial layer. To a certain extent, this is also true of the foreskin of the penis, but the foreskin of the penis has receptors in it that the rest of your body does not. These receptors are acutely attuned to the extraction and uh, transmission of intelligence, if you will, from hormones. And the uh, number of hormones that the uh, uh, foreskin is able to, re- to receive and decode uh, is potentially in the thousands. Uh, some researchers have identified well over 600 components that the foreskin can react to already. And so we're getting into a situation where it's like, wow, you could not have picked a better spot in the body. If you had chosen as your act of, uh, of obedience to your God and covenant with the faith and all of that business, to remove your eye, you would not have affected the community, the individual, and uh, the female half of the species as greatly as this choice of l- nipping off this little bit of skin off these small uh, babies. Because here's what happens. Those receptors are intended to pick up not hormones that are out and about in the air because you shouldn't be out waving your penis in the air as a hormone receptor. They're intended to pick up vaginal secretions. These vaginal secretions then trigger a reaction, not in the penis itself, although there's many that occur there. The ones I'm speaking of are actually in the brain of the male. And this is why women ought to be very distressed. And this is why Jewish women in in particular ought to be uh, really angry and running around with pots and pans beating the, the crud out of anybody that promulgates this idea. Because here's the thing. It's my contention that the removal of the foreskin removes an aspect of love from the individual male that they can never experience without that foreskin. Further, it is my contention that the removal of the foreskin removes an act of love that the community, the family that that male participates in can never experience without that male having that foreskin. And again, it goes up one further step up the fractal. The community as a whole, the social order, the nation, is of a type that is different because those foreskins are gone. Sounds really goofy, (coughs) but it is quite true. Because those foreskins do something that without them does not occur. And that is, they bind that male to that female at a chemical level, at a chemical component of love that is absent with that foreskin gone. Now, many males say, may say to themselves, aha, I'm free, free, you know, I, I won't be bound by this chemical substance and, and, uh, make me hang around with a woman forever that I don't really like or whatever. You see what I'm saying? There can be that male attitude. Probably many of them will be without the foreskin, the current males expressing that. Because there's a, there's a further component to this that the individual males suffer that is beyond merely the absence of those chemicals in the system and the triggering of that particular uh, type of love reaction by the hormones within the foreskin of the penis. Actually, it's the, the foreskin receives the hormones and it triggers, triggers an electrical reaction that literally races up to the brain and sets into motion all this different kind of activity. This different kind of activity should... Um, 
occur before age 20, and there's actually a different form of that activity that occurs between age 20 and 29, if that is the point of initiation uh, for the male into uh, communal family life, sexual activity, and so on. And it's just interesting that there's this age reign effectiveness uh, within the hormonal parts of it. So they, I think the understanding of the people that, that brokered this covenant with their um, uh, delusional um, understanding of God uh, were told to use the foreskin by some being because they knew exactly what was going to happen. It removes this uh, type of brain development that does not occur in the male without it. And so uh, those males that don't have foreskins have brains that are not maturing the way nature intended. No offense. It's not my intent to be uh, offensive to anybody, but I'm sure I'm going to really irritate a lot of people. Uh, this covenant with God and all of that business and and or uh, social um, practice with the vague idea of eliminating uterine cancer is uh, aberrant because it also affects the social order as a whole. Men without foreskins cannot bond to women uh, and will not sacrifice themselves for women the way that men with foreskins will do. Period. Men with foreskins will bond with women from the vaginal secretions triggering a reaction within the sensory apparatus of the male foreskin that triggers a, a growth pattern within the male mind that will not exist without it. These men will bond with women in a way that men without foreskins will not. That affects that individual. That affects the woman involved. That affects the uh, community. And get this, women... Women have a feedback loop. They need that man to express a level of bonding activity to get the next stage of natural social interaction from their own hormonal streams at that point in their life when they're out building community. So because the man doesn't have the foreskin and doesn't send back these signals, which the women pick up uh, not hormonally, but visually and auditorily and so on, then they don't get triggered into this secondary uh, hormonal um, process, which then further reinforces the male. And so the community as a whole is less robust. The community as a whole is much more cantankerous, uh, much more distressed. The harmony of the species as a whole is affected by the uh, brutal habit of nipping foreskins off of uh, male children in the Western world. And, and I'm <laughs> going to state that again. The whole harmony of the planet has been affected by this practice. As bizarre as it may sound, and as strange as it <laughs> may be a thing to harp on, it is these weird small little things that I find so intriguing in terms of their larger social interactions, uh, or repercussions. And it is uh, precisely uh, because of a Taoist bent where the a uh, wise individual, the sage, whatever you want to think of him, is able to see things developing and therefore, you know, move a pebble into a road uh, two months before the carriage goes by just because he knows if he does it just right, well, then he'll be able to upset the the carriage of state just when it needs that upset, and that's his purpose in life. And so basically, my purpose in life, I guess, is to note these weird things and to say, hmm, you know, none of this makes sense. Let's in examine this. And then the more I examine it, the more it starts fitting in with other some of these other larger conspiratorial themes that are going on. And in fact, goes to a great degree towards the support of those themes. It really does. Um, it's staggering the impact on the individual male when they don't have these hormones uh, signals in their body. They, if they have just an, uh, a little bit of the foreskin, they may have just enough of the receptors. It's, it's, so it's a degree issue. It's not a certitude. But I'm wondering how much of psycho, psych, psychopathic behavior is related to that lack of that brain development and that lack of the um, uh, chem chemical support within the brain for a greater bonding within the social order that may be intergenerationally reinforced. What happens when you have generation after generation after generation of males that are removing a functional body part? Does that impact their uh, status within the general species evolution? And does it, in, in, in fact, impact the species evolution as a whole? 
So my way of thinking, it's a pretty crafty little um, uh, off-planet um, scam we fell into. This is sort of a, a genetically the... Oh, it's like a Nigerian uh, uh, email scam. Uh, or wherever. I don't mean to pick on Nigeria particularly. They're all over these days. But think about it this way. If you wanted to hobble a species and you wanted to do it from afar and you're a remote off-world construct demiurge claiming to be a god here in the materium and you come across these rather ignorant uh, this rather ignorant species that just doesn't know very much because it's been traumatized and is trying to deal with original trauma one way to do that would be to take a small part of original trauma and reinforce it if you knew that there was a particularly sensitive part of their body and that they were unaware of this and so you go to these aliens and you say, hey, you know, I'm this uh, giant god and you do what I want and, uh, you know, kill your children for me. And, oh, okay, now you're a good good um, uh, servant of me, the god, and I can demonstrate I can do all these supernatural things, supernatural to you, technological to me. And I happen to know that you've got these uh, very sensitive sensors, and so I, I say, hey, nip these sensors off because I know that the impact that's going to create at all these various levels within the species as a whole, down into the smaller levels of the community on a fractal sense, all the way down to that individual, and how it actually engenders a certain kind of um, uh, psychopathic behavior because there is not that bonding that occurs. Now, I'm not saying that men without foreskins can't bond or anything like that, and again, it's all an issue of degree, but I think that if we really sat down and we had a lot of very smart people look at this and examine this idea from uh, all the aspects, they'll find that I'm probably fairly correct in my understanding of what's been occurring here. And as I say, I'm rather taken aback at a larger um, view of it as to how uh, elegant a way it is to twist a species by making the species basically do it to itself repeatedly, generation after generation after generation, forcing it down a, a particular path. Now, I'm not saying that the elimination of circumcision in um, males in the Western world will change the nature of the species as a whole or overnight. Uh, actually, I am saying it will change the nature of the species as a whole, but it just won't do it overnight. There will be some <laughs> necessary t time lag. But it certainly seems worth doing. This whole idea that um, uh, there's any medical reason for this is absurd, and any doctor that's promulgating that idea, the first thing I would say to him is drop your trousers and let me see if you're cut or not. And if you're cut, you have no authority in this decision because you are by nature a damaged individual. You are by nature damaged not only with the removal of that foreskin, but a part of your brain never matured. And therefore, you're going to force uh, someone else to not have that part of their brain mature. Not that it's um, anything they could have done about it. It's not their fault. But you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like uh, if someone came to me and said, Hey, Cliff, you know, give me some advice on my hairstyle. I would say, well, you know, I'd be honest about it. I wouldn't be like these doctors. I'd be honest about it and say, dude, I'm bald. <laughs> you don't want my <laughs> my opinion on, on how to <laughs> deal with your hair. Um, but in this case, this is a species effective uh, thing, and I think we all should have an opinion on it. And I think every woman on the planet has a right to be very, very, very angry and to express that anger after they validate what I'm saying here. Because it has been a not only a plot against uh, the species as a whole and individual males, but in a in a very nasty way, it is a, a serious. Um, offense to the female gender because of what it does to them psychologically at a level that is different from the males. Bear in mind, the males are unaware that their brains are not developing. They are not bothered by the lack of this, whereas women do suffer that. They suffer it on an individual basis. They take it as a personal affront. Why, why can't this man bond with me? What's going on here? It's my fault. The social order reinforces that because all of these men that have or without this part of the brain go out and write articles and are misogynist and anti-female in many different ways, subtle and, and overt. 
and they express this and it reinforces it in this hugely negative cycle that impacts every woman that ever reads any of the magazines, reads any of the articles and so on. And then, get this, I'm quite convinced the Illuminati is very much aware of this and the evil bastards that pulled their strings are very much aware of this and they are reinforcing it by design. And here's where the conspiracy part gets really even flakier. It's my opinion that we need not have plastics that produce pseudoestrogen compounds. So all of the plastics that are used in the Western world, uh, primarily in North America, and, uh, well, now down into uh, South America as well and in Asia, because the Europeans have a tighter restriction on it, but many of the plastics even there are of the of the type that release, um, that leach out pseudoestrogen compounds into whatever material is in there. These pseudoestrogen compounds are near hormones. So get this, if, uh, this may be like a dual assault. The, there is no economic reason to produce the, the plastics this way. They're actually slightly more expensive, um, made in, with these kinds of formulas. And we gain nothing from them. In fact, we either, uh, deliberately harmful to our health on many different levels. The pseudoestrogen compound producing plastics are also more likely to produce uh, carcinogens because they have all of these basically open molecular bonds that are able to leach out into the material that stores. Whereas uh, more stable um, uh, kinds of plastics that are really should be used for food because they're inert, uh, have no um, ability to leach and are also chemically uh, sealed, so to speak. And so get this, our society is, uh, as in the Western world, is being uh, flooded with the pseudoestrogen compounds, which uh, the one of the early effects is to make children that are very young very plump. And because uh, the estrogen compounds in females take the very thin uh, pre pubescent uh, uh, preteen girls and plump them up for mating. That's one of the functions of this because they need that plumping in order to grow, in order to put on the uh, pounds of bone and muscle mass and everything that allows the female to carry the species forward in time. And so these estrogen compounds are very necessary. But here we've got kids that are, you know, toddlers using, uh, getting a constant stream of these things from that point on uh, forward in their life. And there's this actually has a weird effect, not not even very obvious one. One I've noticed is it has a tendency to divide the social order into three groups. Those three groups are all females, and then males that have foreskins and males that do not. And it is within this younger generation that's dealing with this onslaught of pseudoestrogen hormones through the plastics that the food containers bring that we see these effects. There's been a huge rise in the uh, amount of androgyny, and that is is not a natural um, uh, component uh, and it's also being refor- in- reinforced by the social order in the form of the media, etc. And it's one of the things that the the Illuminati is really keen on producing. And they think they've come up with this particular formula. And, and that is the um, uh, input of certain compounds into the food supply with an intent to socially engineer us via hormones the way they socially engineer or or, um, (coughs) species genetically engineer chickens to grow faster and that kind of thing. Only instead of coming along and just uh, hitting the chicken with a big dump of hormones in in the breast meat six weeks before you get it to lop its head off, uh, to get it to plump up, here the, what they're doing is they're introducing these chemicals into the environment everywhere so it's ubiquitous in order to basically uh, try and um, engineer via weird forms of, uh, uh, how do I want to say this, hormonal uh, obstruction that causes, and they know that if they obstruct certain hormones, they can cause certain brain effects to not occur. And since those brain effects don't occur, other brain effects may occur. That causes certain effects within the mind to uh, have greater potential, and that is their goal. So, it's uh, the grand conspiracy of of lopping off a small foreskin goes all the way out to the giant plastics industry, the people that are producing the formula for that, uh, the Illuminati, the Masons, and um, uh, the uh, uh, interconnectedness of the whole uh, medical industry all the way up into the pharmaceuticals. Now, 
likely very few of the people involved in this have any clue. I'm sure most of the doctors are abysmally ignorant and actually probably believe they're doing some level of good, if not at least making some money by going snip-snip and taking that foreskin off. And they have no idea that if they have daughters, what they're dooming those daughters to have to live with and through. They also have no idea of of what impact they're having on the social order uh, in general and the um, uh, generational impact that's going to have further down the line. In that regard, um, the insanity of a covenant with any being, any external uh, off-world god, I mean, that's absurd, right? Uh, On its face. But but just grant them their delusion and say that any... um, covenant with a being that demands you alter the species in order to be faithful to it is basically an assault on the species. And here's where we get into the, the even more nasty component of this. Because I'm, I'm uh, a true Aikido ka in the sense that I wish to offer no one offense and you really have to attack me repeatedly to get me to be offensive. I will defend myself with some uh, actual, actually some joy because I love expressing my Aikido art. But um, uh, I'm not going to try and pound your head into the ground. I'm rather going to try and understand, you know, what it is is it that has occurred between us that, that makes you so silly as to keep trying to repeatedly attack me. And it, and it works out really well because in Aikido you just keep throwing people around and they get very tired. And when they're really, really tired, then you can go on over and sort of sit on one of their limbs and say, you better talk to me. You know, this isn't going to go anywhere. And sooner or later they, they will give you some in, indication of what's going on. But so as an Aikido ka, I don't want to cause anybody any offense. Uh, but it, it actually may be necessary that we offend some individuals and point out a particular aspect of their behavior to them. And that is that in the sense that anyone who believes, who has a belief system, is operating under a point of view that is not necessarily shared by those uh, outside of their belief system. And if their belief system is encouraging the lopping off of a necessary sensory apparatus of the uh, human species, and that will negatively impact uh, their uh, sisters and daughters and so on, and it is also negatively impacting the species, then I think we we need to point out to them that if they were to continue this behavior after having it pointed out to them, that further on down the road, they may be labeled as collaborators. And here's what we're discussing. We're discussing collaborator in the term that it was used by the French or anybody suffering the occupation of the Nazis, even the Germans. The Germans had collaborators and resistance as well as the French and the Czechs and everybody else. So a collaborator is not a good individual in the and it's not a good thing to be in the grand scheme of things because ultimately it is always the non-collaborative force throughout history that has won. And that's going to occur here as well. So collaborative behavior is immediately rewarded by the occupying force, but in the long term is a negative health indicator because many of the collaborators did not survive the liberation. And that will be the case here as well. Collaborative behavior will be extremely frowned upon and will be called into question with some vigor as we go forward. I have certain indications of this in the nature of my work, but also this is a predictable outcome of the next few years as our species wakes up at an individual in uh, higher levels up the fractal chain to to the collective uh, trauma that is uh, daily done to us at all these different levels. So, um, there we go. It's, there's the grand penis conspiracy that was intended to uh, shatter individual males, uh, warp the male mind, uh, alter the relationship between the male and females, uh, destroy the female gender in, in unity. It makes them much more aggressive and um, uh, inter-gender uh, uh, competitive when they are not able to get a bonding behavior with a with a male see they don't most women most uh, females are not aware of this and i've seen it i saw it when i was a young man and didn't recognize what i was watching in my peers and the females were not they were desperate to get a response at some level and yet they were not even able to vocalize their desperation and it was because I was young. I couldn't see it. I was under the uh, impact of those hormones. They are uh, young. They are under the impact of the hormones. And when your your mind is hormonally affected, you can't see the hormones that are affecting it. 
So it's only later that when those hormones are, are gone and you get to do some deep thinking about it that some of these things become clear. And, and so it really strikes me what a terrible disservice this is to women because they are not even able to articulate what it is they're desperately seeking. And they, and the reason that they're not able to articulate it is, of course, because it's a hormonal overlay that is extremely subtle, that is so far beyond our general level of thinking that you really have to noodle on this and gnaw and chew to get some grasp of what's going on here. And so it is very understandable that they run around in a slightly desperate, crazed condition as an aspect of the hormonal pressure that they're feeling. And unfortunately, because of the social engineering uh, that the foreskin lopping off covenant with this off-world being um, creates, these women will never, ever be satisfied at that hormonal level. And this does not exist in many other social orders. So it, it gives a certain... Uh, uh, angst, not angst, well maybe that, a certain angst and certainly a level of irritability to our social order that need not exist there. We are disharmonious in the Western world and I think a great deal of that disharmony goes down to those little tiny bits of skin that just don't exist anymore. And I think that'll do it for the day. I've got to get the dogs out for our Saturday five mile walk and that takes a while because one of the dogs is an older fellow. A lot of this thinking came out as a result of my having to deal with uh, Gracie, who is our rescue puppy here, and was somewhat traumatized by the uh, circumstances under which she came to us. And so I had to take her out of that trauma, and it took a number of months. And then I ended up uh, listening to Michael Tassarian, who is just a brilliant mind. Uh, you know, uh, uh, just an incredible level of thinking that goes on there. Doesn't merely um, swallow and regurgitate like so many of the researchers. Um, and you have to work for it. So bear in mind, Michael Tassarian is uh, advanced course material. But when you get to that level, I think there's no finer sensei on the planet for symbology and greater levels of understanding, especially as relates to the trauma that uh, exists within humans at, and all species, but particularly within humans at many different levels. And so it was thinking in terms of trauma over those many months that led me to the c conclusions that, you know, that's rather traumatic for these uh, small male individuals, but that really doesn't account for much. The amount of trauma that they experience as a result of that is not the psychic damage. Of course, it does. Uh, the Circumcision Act does uh, cause that trauma to persist over time. But that really wasn't the core of it. But I knew that I was close to something just because of the many anomalies that are attendant upon circumcision within our uh, social order and the species as a whole and the fact that it's not universally um, practice. It would make a, it would be an entirely different story, for instance, if there were a virus that uh, uh, was a, a foreskin specific such that uh, we had a huge mortality, infant mortality rate of young males that with foreskins, and that if you got the foreskins off real quick, they would survive. Uh, but absent something along those lines, uh, the it is basically a really weird anomalous behavior that that we uh, should as awakening individuals examining ourselves and our relationship to our species and our species as a whole really think about because it's the strange stuff that if you dig into it deep enough you find out damn it does go back to the evil ones and the illuminati and all the way back to to whatever beings are pulling the strings on all of the religion and it reinforces my thought that, you know, uh, human to human, I don't give a damn. You can be as spiritual as you want. It's not impacting me. Uh, but if you've got a religion, let's just flat out say it. If you've got religion, uh, it's very much like a penis. Uh, we're glad you've got it. That's great. You can be as proud of it as you want. But better keep it in your pants and don't come around and try and shove it down people's throats. It's just not going to go anymore. And religion, in my opinion, is a collaborative behavior. And that damns it more than any other thing, especially as we go forward and the true level of collaboration and its damage on uh, to our species comes out. So, finally, got to get out. Uh, if this is of interest and um, of use to you, you can uh, throw a tenth of a Bitcoin at us. 
uh, the idea is for you to use the bitcoins more than for us to receive them, because every time you use a bitcoin, you're kicking the Bernanke right in the butt, and we got to get rid of these federal banks everywhere. All these central banks are an evil upon the planet, probably related to foreskin nipping. Thank you. <laughs>